So it's been about 48 hours since uh, we built the off-grid homestead water tank or water tower for the water tank and I want to go over with you uh, uh, what I found as far as pressures, uh, volume, and I want to address uh, a few of the safety sallies that have come out of the woodwork on this project. I don't know what it is about this particular project that has brought out so many safety sallies. It, it, I don't know if it's just a, um, I guess it's an insight to our pr protectionist culture. You know, if I were to take counsel of, uh, of a good portion of the comments that I've received on this project and others, um, I wouldn't leave the house. I wouldn't be able to do anything because it would be just too dangerous. But let's, uh, let's, let's talk some realities here for a minute. This um, pallet racking is designed to be freestanding. I actually cut four feet off the top of this. It was originally designed to be even taller and to be able to support a static load freestanding. These uh, risers here are doubled up. And you see these cross members here are all welded heavy gauge steel. There's not an issue with shear. We're not talking about, uh, I've had some people say that the legs are too skinny. The legs are not too skinny and they're reinforced here. And not only that, we have the crossbars in the front, which I have four of them, which pick up four of these holes and lock in with the safety pin. This thing is absolutely going nowhere, so stop it. You're scaring Mrs. Wrangler Star. She thinks the thing's going to fall on her head, and, and it's not. It's very strong. I even had uh, had some people say that, uh, oh, you can't hook this to the building. You know, the building wasn't designed for that. That's nonsense. We're not asking the building to support the entire weight of the structure. We're simply asking the building uh, to, to give a little bit of um, strength, uh, it, it, you know, f from tipping. And the only way this thing is going to move at all is if maybe a hundred mile an hour wind and we're not asking the building uh, to support the entire weight of the tank we're asking the building just to prevent the thing from t from, from from moving at all from from side to side i could put roseanne bar up here break dancing and the thing's not going to move and we're talking about a static load a non-movable load up here uh so so please you're killing me with this it's this is not going to go anywhere it's overly built it's more than adequate for the load that i've got on it so uh, now that, that I'm done ranting on that, let's go and see uh, the, what pressure we're getting and how much volume. So I hope you can see right there, the tank is nearly full. It looks like we're about seven, eight inches from uh, the top, but being full. So now I'll, we'll go put the pressure gauge on to see what type of pressure we're getting at the outlet of the garden. All right, so if you're joining us for the first time here, let me put this in context for you. Here we have uh, our homestead garden inside of a 75 by 100 foot fence and the, the, what we're <clears throat> trying to do is uh, develop an irrigation system that will um, uh, bring enough water up here completely off grid uh, to support our garden. Our garden is small, this is our first year, but uh, by next year, Lord willing, we'll have uh, our fruit trees and grapes and small orchard, just all, all those things that we'll need to support it inside of this fenced area and we can expand it if we need to. So what uh, the project here is the water tower. is It's raised up here about uh, 12 feet, I think, to the bottom of the tank, a 500-gallon tank that's being supplied by a ram pump completely off-grid. So the ram pump is pumping the water up to the tank. The tank now is gravity feeding down to the raised bed garden boxes. So I have a spigot over here plumbed in. Uh, with the hose on it, the pressure gauge, cause, so let's go see what type of pressure we're getting. All right, we have our uh, very excellent oil-filled Dixon gauge here hooked to the hose bib, and I'm reading a uh, good solid 10 PSI. Drip irrigation requires, if you have the right nozzles, only uh, five pounds of pressure, so this is twice of what we need. So this is very excellent. It's going to be uh, more than adequate to supply the needs for our garden. All right, let's see how much volume we get here in one minute. We'll uh, fill this gallon can and we'll time it. All right, that's 20 seconds for one gallon. So three gallons a minute. I'm gonna give you an idea what the volume is here. Not too bad for gravity. 
So the real test is going to be, will, can I turn all the garden boxes on? We have uh, right here, now we've got four boxes per group. There's one, group one, two, and three, and each box is a separate zone. Uh, it's got its own water valve. Before running straight off the ram pump, I could only run one zone at a time. Well, what we're going to see now is I'm going to turn on all the sprinklers and see if they'll support, if the tank, the pressure, and the volume will support running everything at one time. All right, so here's box one. You get kind of a combination of soaker hoses and different sprinklers, but that's working great. Now we'll open zone two. But you're not going to see anything because these are all soaker hoses, but uh, it will be taking water out of the system. And last and not least, the zone three, which is a spinner heads. So I can see here now with all three zones open, all of the uh, sprinkler heads, plenty of pressure, plenty of volume much improved over uh, running directly off the ram pump. So we can see here with all of the watering the sprinklers open, we've only lost um, one pound. So what that tells me is there's plenty of room to expand. We can add uh, many more sprinklers and not have to divide them up into, into so many zones because we have uh, the supply and the pressure uh, to support it. So here's the fun part I've been waiting for. Uh, here I put in off the water tower as you can see there, a nice big two inch supply to a ball valve uh, that will be for my fire, fire connection. I can do, I can connect a fire hose to it, or I can uh, primarily, what I've designed it for is I can back my uh, water tank brush rig, my fast attack uh, wildland fire rig, and I can uh, fill it up twice. I've got a 500 gallon tank up here. I can fill the, the 250 gallon tank on my truck quickly. So the idea, is to uh, run up here if I run out of water and need more water, throw my quick attach valve on here, pull it, and as you can see, plenty of water. That's <laughs> so much. What's that? Oh, water hammer. <laughs> I can't just stand here and do this all day. I love it. So the water tank uh, is exceeding my expectations. Um, better pressure than I was expecting, more volume than I was expecting, and the ramp up fill, fills it up really quickly. Uh, it seems about uh, 10 hours or so from empty, uh, the ramp pump will fill up that 500 gallon tank. And what's nice is the little pump works all night. It fills up the tank. When Mrs. Wrangler Star comes here in the morning, she's got a nice big reservoir of water uh, to, to water the garden, uh, regardless of how much the spring is flowing. So I'm really happy with it. It uh, was uh, kind of done on a budget. I don't have a whole lot invested in it, but it's uh, very simple, uh, very robust, and it's gonna work. And completely independent of um, power, grid, and that was my, um, that's been my objective all along. So in closing, I wanna thank all you guys for uh, linking over to uh, my dad's YouTube channel page. Uh, he's uh, get, just getting that started and showcasing uh, his very excellent adventure van he's built and appreciate the comments and and uh, doing that so it was fun for him um, to get some subscribers and video views as any of you who know it that's always fun it's always a it's nice when uh, someone can uh, give you a little leg up and I appreciate uh, the support uh, for you guys doing that also uh, last night I uploaded a uh, I finally found the perfect EDC flashlight and I uploaded about a 20 minute video on my Wrangler Star DIY channel uh, where I go into depth on this and explain why I think this is the best flashlight I've ever had. So if you'd like to see what that is, uh, go ahead and go on over there. I'll put a link here, or you can go to my YouTube channel page and link over to the DIY channel. I'm going to keep uh, the Wrangler Star channel kind of uh, on task, focusing on the homestead and homestead projects. I'm not going to dilute it with um, a lot of other things. So if I find something that I want to do a video on it that's a little bit off category, the nice place to dump all that stuff is the DIY channel. So um, subscribe to that uh, for a variety of um, less produced, um, shorter, more off-topic videos. And I think that's it. Do I have anything else to add? No. Appreciate all your support, and we'll see you on the next video.